I guess we're on. Hey, dudes. <laughs> Liz in here. No. Tony's over behind his desk. For now. But uh, I'm back. I've, I've been gone for about three or four weeks, haven't I? I don't remember. <laughs> Have <laughs> no. I been gone? It's been <laughs> no. a week. It's been a Two while. Two weeks. Two weeks. Okay. Anyway, Tony has this wonderful idea for a chessboard. How 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 great is it that I came up with the idea <clears throat> and then found enough people to come in here where I don't have to do anything? Well, you do have to do things. Oh. Are you going to do things? Yeah. What are you going to do? Well, my bladder's full. <laughs> we didn't need to hear that. <laughs> so I think I'll take care of that. It might take a little bit, maybe about an hour or so, and then I'll come back here and end the end the video after that. Okay. <laughs> no, I mean, what do you? Like, Denny came in, he said, "What are we doing for a video?" And I was like, "I'm pretty sure you, you know." You said, "Oh, I heard you were doing a chessboard." That's what you actually told yeah. me was you said, yeah. "Hey, I heard you were doing a chessboard," and I said, "Well, about that." I wasn't sure if you were going to be back, yeah. but now that you are, here's my idea for you to do on your chessboard. Yeah. Yeah. And you've decided on a, <clears throat> a a board. The actual board dimension is sixteen by sixteen with two inch squares. Correct. It's not going to be a regulation chess or um, checker checker board, but it'll be close enough. So you made you an eighteen by eighteen. Yeah, I cut the piece of leather eighteen by eighteen, so we had a one inch border around the outside. So you got your. We're going to have two inch by two inch squares, and so we're going to get it set up. Have you looked at a picture to know you're alternating? Squares? No, I haven't looked at a picture. I figure that an alternate is an alternate. Okay, perfect. Am I correct? Yeah. I mean, it can only go one <clears throat> way. Right. I can it. Can it only go one? I don't way? know. You tell me. I hadn't thought about that. All right, let's see. I was just gonna jump in and do something. That's what I normally do. Let, let's see. Yeah, it looks like it just alternates, and then it's just different by the time you get there. So if you make, you just all, yeah, take your things out in the next row. This will yeah. be your your. And it doesn't room. matter which. I'll start out with with the. Oh, did you want to see that way, again? Yeah, the way you had it. Yeah. Well, it doesn't matter because they. They're yeah, that's somebody's they're board. So I'll Yo, just start out. Just <laughs> you just run with them. We'll just make things okay. happen. I've already plotted this out, and I've cut part of it with my swivel knife. So I, you're doing here. Let's look. Maybe we can look at that overhead camera and see what you're you're doing. You're going to do a veg tan one, and you're gonna you're gonna swivel your swivel your lines out. You already got your squares all kind of marked out and laid your pattern out by two inch by two inch. And so you'll we'll get that done, and we'll do some matte backgrounding on yeah, it. Every other every other square, I'm going to bevel and. Use a matte background. Okay, on. and then we got actually a kind of a bubble wrap. We got Anderson going over here on a travel sized weave pattern. Yep. I don't know. We'll, we'll see how it works. We'll see how it works <laughs> out. And then I got a piece of Italian veg in here. I got to cut. I'm going to cut my pieces out, measure mine, put some blue painters tape on there, and then buff out the wax on top of it to make my black. So I, I'll have black and wax. I think first. that'll be cool if it works. We'll see what happens. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Yeah, this is all experimental, you guys. Oh. Every, every bit of this. And then the other on the Ghost Italian, it was really cool because we have red and black veg on it. So I just clicked out some circles on there, and I'll buff those off, and so we'll have some yeah. red and black checkers. checkers. Yeah. And if you want to use chess pieces, use your own chess pieces. I'm not going to make some out of leather. Uh, first time chasing leather mask with Chris Steve. Hey, nice. And it seems unfamiliar, so I placed the board in such a manner that the bottom right-hand corner on the side is white, white on the right. White, white on the right. Okay. You know, Thank I you. learned I learned in the restaurant business, and Justin probably knows this, whenever you're resetting tables, white was always on right. Do you know why they say that, Denny? Uh-uh. White on the right for people that are vision impaired. They know that the, mm -hmm. the salt is white, and so they would grab the salt on the right. So they know that they can doctor their food up with the salt if uh -huh. needed. Very good. Yeah. So if you haven't learned anything about leather crafting so far in this video, at least you know why white is on the right. So it has been educational. <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's what we strive for is education. Yeah. All right. 
I made myself a little reminder there. Oh, I put little little mark marks. That okay. Well, let me make sure this camera's set so we can see you. Okay. And then we got the other camera so we can see Anderson uh, from the overhead and, the, and on the sewing machine. He's going to be doing some sewing. But ain't nobody need to see me. Uh, don't switch yet, Dustin. I gotta rotate this a little bit. All right, I think I, I think that looks okay. Getting ready to find out. Oh, why can Tony? Perfect. Thanks, Charles. <laughs> Look there, we can see you. All right. Now what I'm gonna do? I'm just using a regular swivel knife here, and I'm just gonna finish my grid. So you just went through and you marked with your stylus. Your grid that you have set up, and then just use a straight edge to help make sure yeah. you stay straight. Yeah, I very seldom use a straight edge. Yeah, but I really want this straight, so I'm going to use a straight edge Good. this time. It's it's very difficult to cut a straight line. Now that we got you all set up, and I know what's going on over there. We'll let Anderson talk about what he has going on over here. But I'm going to zoom this camera in on what he has going. You want to talk about how you set your <coughs> yours up? Anderson. Well, it's currently a, a mess. Oh, sweet. But what a great time to check in on it. <clears throat> so, I'm going with one inch strips, except my, my edges are a little bit wider. So, <clears throat> once I get everything squared up and sewn down, um, these edges are a little bit wider, so it gives me a little bit... Uh, Grab, I'm going to roll the edges and have a border around it. We'll, we'll see if it works. It's got to work. Yeah. One way or another, it's got to yeah. work. Just trying to square up my lines and then sew down another edge, tighten them up, and go for the best. All right, I've got my whole grid cut, so I'm going to start to, I'm just going to bevel the, the squares that, I, uh, that I'm going to use that backgrounder on. And the reason is because the they're going to be a bit darker because we're going to antique this. So the squares that I background are going to be a bit darker than the, the squares that aren't backgrounded. And the ones that aren't backgrounded are our play squares. I hope everybody understood what I meant there. Uh, no, we don't. We don't carry them. Uh, Barry King makes them. There are several custom tool makers that will make you a bead blade, but, but we don't stock. I wish they did. Sometimes. Sounds like Tom. All right. You know what I forgot? What's that? My mall. So I will be back. Well, just you, Andy. you're left with the most talkative one. It's probably hard to background <laughs> without a mall. Anderson, that was a close one. It was. You almost got left in here to leave the whole show by yourself. I, I told him, hey, you're left with the most talkative one. <laughs> That is for sure. We'll have to get in on Denny's vacation whenever he gets back. Talk about what, what he did. What he didn't do. So for where I'm standing, I can't read no chat. What's my email? Which Michael? Are you on? Is that on Facebook? Michael, haven't you sent me it? Haven't you sent me an email? Live at Springfield Leather. Live at Springfield Leather will get me. All right, I'm back. Welcome back, Denny. Thank you. It was much shorter than the last trip you took. <laughs> Are you coming up, Rose? 
Rose is my old drinking buddy. She comes over and drinks a half a gallon of water out of my bucket every yep. day. <laughs> but she, she just, she tours around everywhere to go uh, see everybody, see if they got water anywhere. Well, she's just got to make sure people are doing all right. She came in here to Luna's bucket, got it all checked out, and emptied it. Yeah, emptied it out for her. We, we put Tony in the uh, uh, description bar and left Kenny out of surprise again. Surprise! Uh, Electro Guy says, Thanks for doing this part. I got a small pile of poker chips that I wanted to use to check. There you are. Yeah. Probably you make more money using them as checkers than you do as poker. Yeah, oh yeah. Especially if I'm playing. Yeah. So I come in today. Denny says, hey, how did the trading cards go with uh, Rusty and Kevin? <laughs> and I said, well, Denny, it's going to take too long for me to explain how well it went. So let me get my phone and we'll watch a little video. <laughs> so we watched the video. He saw just how good it went. It, to me, it looked like it went pretty well. We entertained people. That's, that's our goal, is entertainment. We're not in the leather business. We're in the entertainment business here. Let's not get too crazy. A bunch of adults talking here. That's just our opinion. Too. <laughs> yeah. Talked with Liz a little bit yesterday. New text message. She was hanging out at the Hoover Dam. Oh boy. No, oh, she wasn't hanging off of the Hoover Dam. No, hanging out at it, not <laughs> hanging off. I know there's some old machine gun nests up on the top of the hill. There are? Yep, they're disguised as rocks. Got our old FBI agent in here, Anderson. Letting all the cats out of the bag. Yep. I have a question, Denny. Okay. How come your signature isn't as pretty as Jim Linnell? Uh, handwriting was never my forte. Besides, I think my signature is beautiful. It's just like it's four little lines. <laughs> it's unique. <laughs> Joshua says nothing against Tony, but he was he's glad that you're back. <laughs> well, thanks. Trust me, I'm glad that he's back too. Tony's feelings are hurt. But... Oh, shoot, I got no feelings to hurt. <laughs> you don't have feelings? No, I just quit using those things a long time ago. Jessica says hi, Jessica. Hey, Jessica. Hope everything's <clears throat> going well in the frozen tundra. Where's Jessica at? Wisconsin. Oh, that is frozen thunder area. Will be before long if it ain't yet. We actually got into snow when we. We were need in. to talk about your trip. I know we haven't got there yet, but we're we're bound to. Yeah, we were uh, actually we were. This is towards the end of our trip, and mm -hmm. we were down in Roswell. I don't know if any of you have ever heard of Roswell, New Mexico. Area 51 is near there, and there are little green men everywhere in that town. <laughs> Literally everywhere. Walmart has little green men. Oh, really? Yeah, every place has little green men sticking up in the window or in a statue outside. They are playing it up, are they? Yeah. You can sit on their lap and have your picture taken with little green men. It is fun. But anyway. I wish somebody would ask to sit on my lap and take a picture like Santa Claus. 
Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, we uh, we stayed at this campground about 10 miles from Roswell, and it's called the Bottomless Lake, which was really neat. It's, a, it's an area, I don't know if you guys are interested in this kind of stuff. <laughs> well, bottomless lakes. What it what it actually is? Uh, it's a series of. It's all limestone underneath the ground, underneath the the dirt, mm -hmm. and there's a mountain sixty miles away that to seeps water into this aquifer, and it's it actually comes up like an artesian well in these different spots, mm -hmm. and uh, limestone will actually melt or disintegrate with water right. over a period of time. Yeah. And all these uh, places have actually just caved in. Oh, wow. You know, and it makes these, it's almost like a crater. They're just, just a hole in the ground. And they aren't, yeah, it's a conical hole. Yeah. And it's not really bottomless, but some of these things are like 90 feet deep. And that's pretty bottomless if you're trying to swim and can <laughs> But uh, it was pretty neat, and uh, but then in one day we decided we were going to drive to this mountain that shed all this water onto this aquifer, and uh, it was uh, west of Roswell, about forty miles, and we got up on the mountain and it started snowing, and, and I don't know if you know what grapple is, but grapple is little tiny ice balls, like about the size of a pin. Mm -hmm. You know, but it just started doing that all over us. It was really beautiful. It was neat. When you live in Missouri and then get to see something like that, it's pretty cool. Yeah, right. <laughs> but uh, anyway, that was towards the last of our trip. But it, in the beginning, we stayed for three nights. And this is really not funny to me, but it might be funny to you guys. The the first night when we were in Oklahoma, uh, I ran the batteries down on our little trailer, and I didn't have our, we have a solar charger, but I didn't have it hooked up, because we just got in there that day, and uh, so I, I begged, borrowed, and pleaded, and they let me plug the battery charger into one of their outlets, and got that done, but I needed to water in our trailer. So, and I have uh, four six gallon water cans. And I've got those filled up. And then I have a little, uh, a little 12 volt uh, pump that I use to transfer the water out of those jugs into the trailer. Yeah. Well, pump was shot. So, that was our first fiasco. I had, we had, oh, okay. Get this, you guys. I'm getting it. My wife forgot her underwear uh -oh. at the house and all of our food. All the a food? Big, a big part of our food. Okay. Well, that seems like a tragedy. It was a tragedy. So we went to town the next day. We were close to Woodward, Oklahoma, if mm -hmm. I remember right. And of course, they've got a Walmart and they've got a tractor supply, if I remember right, was the farm store we went to. And I got a transfer pump there for my water. And she got underwear. So we were back in business again. We stayed there a couple of nights. Then we went on to uh, Raton, New Mexico, which is up in the very northeast corner of the state. And uh, it borders on the Colorado border. Uh, the nearest Colorado town is Trinidad. So we stayed in that campground, and I went fishing and just had a ball there. My wife collected rocks, which is her favorite thing in the world. And we even more fun than eating bugs. Huh? Even more fun than eating bugs? Well, well, let's not go that far. Okay. But she likes it a lot. But we went to uh, Cimarron, New Mexico, which is... 
actually their claim to fame is a guy named Will James, who is a Western artist, had a hotel there. And it's called the St. James Hotel. And every outlaw in the world stayed at it. Stayed at it and killed people there. And it's a real old hotel, and they kept it pretty much original. They rent rooms still, and the rooms go for a pretty good price. And there's not a bathroom in every room. You got to share a bathroom down the hall. Oh yeah, yeah. But people, people seem to enjoy that kind of thing. <laughs> share a bathroom. <laughs> yeah. And let me see what else. We can do. Oh, in Oklahoma, there's a place called the Glass Mountain or Gloss Mountain. They pronounce it two different ways. And supposedly some uh, British explorer was there, and he he woke up one morning and he said it looks just like gloss. <laughs> so they pronounce it gloss and glass. But it's neat. It's got all sorts of selenite crystals and stuff. Up huh. there. I prefer glass. Glass, yeah, I do too. <laughs> My own mountain. <laughs> Did you do any fishing while you were out and about? I did. How'd that work out? Oh, it worked out the best. We were in Raton, our campground was right on a big lake. Moya, Lake Moya. Lake Moya? I believe that was the name of it. And part of it is in New Mexico and part of it is in Colorado. The biggest part of it is in New Mexico. But the fish were just ravenously hungry. And they loved me for being there. Yeah? Until I... Until they got a hook in their mouth? Yeah. Then they seemed to be a little bit disgruntled. Well, what'd you do when they got so upset? I reeled them in. And ate them? We, yes. We had fish for breakfast three mornings. Yeah. Uh, we cooked in the trailer. It was pretty chilly. Actually, there was no fires allowed at, oh, at, right. because it's been so dry yeah. out there. Yeah. Yeah, but it and it was very windy most almost every time I went outside. But they were good over the, even off on the stove in the camper. Dunkway Proving Grounds. I don't know. Oh, I think they're saying Area 51. Oh, they're, they're going back and forth on where it's at. It's actually the bad area. Oh. Yeah, I think Roswell and Area 51 are different. Are they? Yeah. yeah. Okay, never mind. Then we were in Roswell. Yeah. I don't know what Area 51 is. Then. Well, isn't there an Air Force base near Roswell, though? That's what I thought. All I know is there's great men everywhere around that. Everywhere. <clears throat> there's a lot of these squares, Tony. Yeah. Somebody talked about a push bubbler. Yeah, but I couldn't get much definition of it. Oh, okay. Bubbler, so I'm doing this the hard way. All right. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. This is going to turn into a two-day project, I think. Oh, good. It'll give me time to actually do mine. How are you doing on yours? I've got my piece cut out. That's as far as I've got. Got a 16 inch board now. I got one inch all the way around. Well, you're making yours the same size? Yeah. Right. That way, Andy's, Andy's the only different one. 
So I'm going to mark my uh, two inch squares here. Now I'm using a piece of the five to six ounce veg tan for this. And I'm going to line it with some three to four ounce uh, chrome tan. I know we talked about making it where you could roll it up store and store the and store the, the pieces in it, but that would be kind of bulky and lumpy. Bulky and lumpy. And plus, when you rolled the, the board back out, I'm afraid it would be fairly misshapen. Yeah, mine's already misshapen. Had you misshapen it? Yes, yes, it is. It's the it, silver spaceship, almost like the uh, Starship Enterprise, if I remember right. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, apparently, today is National Sandwich Day. Guys. Oh, all right. Yeah, I well, I have lunch plans to eat leftovers, but I may have to change them now and go get a sandwich. Looks like Andy's is misshapen too. Well, this is going to um, assist to hold it together while I sew it. Probably end up cutting the back of off of it. Should have used something a little bit more stiff. Mine is just because these double shoulders that we have and been rolled up on the shelf. And this, this we're planning on, I'm going to put a tie strap on this. So we're planning on being able to roll this up. Mm -hmm. Hopefully with this uh, chrome tan lining that we have, it will uh, be relaxed enough for when you roll it back out, it will lay halfway what else did you, what else happened on your trip oh i'm trying to think you know when you're on the spot you can't think of anything no well you can move off the spot if you need to well i'm trying to get <laughs> off the spot here We went to, uh, we stayed in a campground in Oklahoma on our way out called Boiling Spring. And I was prepared for this really cool water feature, you know. But Boiling Spring, Oklahoma isn't noted as, as a tourist attraction. Any part of it? Yeah, any part of it. <laughs> but uh, this water feature consisted of a pool of water with two little. And it had sand on the bottom and two little bubbles coming up. Two bubbles. <laughs> in two different spots. Kind of like when it rains here and you go to any river, you just <laughs> yeah. in the gravel bar over there, there's right. <laughs> water bubbling up. Right. So what, it might have been bubbling, but it was not a roaring well, boil. It, it was It was the best they could do right there. Yeah, I boiling think. springs was just a, just starting to boil. Yes. There's a couple of ghost towns in Oklahoma where uh, I, they've been doing some mining and now nobody lives there. Kind of like Chernobyl, but not a yeah, not a nuclear power plant. Well, because. there's there's the tri-state area thing that happened. Mm -hmm. That was the place I was talking 30, about 30 years ago. Yeah, you can still go drive around there. There's still some people live there, but. Mm -hmm. I can't remember what the deposits were that were there, though. I, I think it was a lot of lead. Yeah. <clears throat> we did go to a cemetery in New Mexico called, it was, it used to be a mining town called Dawson. And there were two mining disasters there. One was in 1913 or something like that. And the other one was in 1923. But the first one killed like 300 people, and the second one killed 200 people. Yeah. And they finally decided we probably ought to quit doing this. So they shut the thing down. But there's this huge cemetery with all these graves in it. And the town.
town is no more, but it used to be one of the largest cities in New Mexico, and now no one's ever even heard of it. Hmm. Uh, there's one out there. I forget the name of it. I, I'm huge on like those kind of things. Uh huh. It's like Tony says, like a ghost, an old mining ghost town. Well, one guy bought the whole property. Oh, yeah. The whole town and was restoring everything and like getting the buildings back to their original. And it hadn't been touched since like the early 1900s. So it still has that old western vibe to it. Cool. Yeah. I like stuff like that. You know, that when you think of the history behind it, it's Baffling. You should take an. Well, it's even crazier to think that it was you know, just 115, 120 years ago, too. Yeah. It wasn't that long ago. Yeah. I mean, yeah, to us, that's, that's you know, a little bit over one to two lifetimes. But we should have an SLC tour where we just go out and we just see, see the sights of the country. I agree. And we'll just go live from there and we'll just chat as we drive. I agree. And we can make something. We can be like Kevin. We can just place wallets everywhere we go. Right. Placing a wallet here. Placing a wallet there. Yeah. How to lace a wallet in New Mexico. How to lace a wallet in Arizona. How to lace a wallet <laughs> in Montana. How to lace a wallet in Alaska. Yeah, let's go lace wallets in Alaska. I would like to do that. How to give a grizzly bear a leather hat. <laughs> Lori Stone said that he lives in New Mexico and any sea war is going to be bad. Oh, really? <laughs> well, last time we went, we went to the. It was in northern New Mexico. It was a place called Chaco Canyon, which is uh, an Indian ruin, Native American ruin. And uh, all of the buildings and stuff that they built, all the stone buildings and everything are still standing. They're, you know, they're in disrepair, of course. I can't imagine how many rocks it took, you know, millions of rocks these people carry to build these buildings. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a town just north of Springfield called Phoenix. Uh-huh. I know Phoenix exactly where it where is. Where the Phoenix Quarry is. Yeah, it's the out by the road. There. Yeah. It's kind of a cool to go and look around. Uh-huh. Still use it. There's a guy, the guy that uh, owns it lives just down the street from me. Oh, he still, yeah? He still cuts stuff out of it. For houses and things like that in the area. Yeah, yeah and they do monuments and stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, the uh, <clears throat> Carthage, Missouri, uh, their courthouse there is huge because mo most of the, the like the state capitals and monuments, all that stuff came from Missouri. Yeah. Look at that! I got a. Great on my looks good. Tape it. Yeah, but I'm, how are you going to do that? I don't know. I think you, what you're going to have to do is tape tape the whole thing and use a, an exacto knife to cut out the opposite square. That seems it heinous. does. It does. How else would you do it? Cut out little squares of tape. Uh, <laughs> we've got groovers. Wasn't that a book? We got worms. <laughs> we got groovers. Yeah. What's that supposed to mean? You can groove all those lines. Oh. Help help them separate, anyways. Yeah, but his your dilemma is how to how to get that tape on there yeah. in in just a checkerboard pattern, right? Mm hmm. Might pull some of it yeah, off. I don't know. You better find out pretty quick. 
Time's a wasting. Yep. Mm -mm. What could I do? I think. What if I got a piece of paper that had a one inch square or a piece of Montex that had a one inch square cut out of it? I just hold it over. Two inch square? Yeah, with two inch would be better. Yeah, since I, that's, since that's I made two size. inch. <laughs> since I made a two inch square. That's a very good point, Denny. You could. Yeah. Tape the whole thing, but you're going to have to be careful and tape right on the lines. Yeah. And if I were you, I would just get an exacto knife. Because you'll just have to cut the two sides since you're going to tape right on the right on the line. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Just make a nice little light cut. All right. <laughs> I got him to believe me now. <laughs> Watch this, guys. See, this is <clears throat> reminiscent of Roswell, New Mexico, where they did a lot of experimental stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're doing here. What's that? What's our crafter shirt say? Oh, yeah. I forget the whole routine. Get guesswork or something like that. Guesstimations by unqualified individuals. Unless you got that part right, we got unqualified individuals. You might be certified, but not qualified. <laughs> you know, the, the point is, the point is, really, you guys, I mean, you can think about stuff all you want to. And in theory, lots of things will work. But in reality, they don't all work. But sometimes you can't find that out until you you're too late. I see what, why some of these leather boards we were looking at were $180 now. <laughs> <laughs> Whose idea was this to do this for a video? Uh, I don't remember that guy's name. But... Yeah. All I know is he talks a bunch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why? Why? Take him out back and tar and feather him, that's for sure. Yeah, Andy, you want to tell a story how you got involved with this project? Uh, <laughs> somebody looked very dazed and confused and was talking <laughs> about things. And it's the last time Andy ever asked what's going to happen in a video, I can tell you that. What are you guys doing on video this week? Well, so let me said, tell you. You said, well, Andy, you're making a chess board. Yep. That's about how that went. He said, I've been thinking of this idea, and I said, good. Quit thinking about it. Let's do it. Yep. Yeah. Sure Sure. I think it's just a saying that's kind of gone around for a while. What is the that saying? Oh yeah.
nice, Carolyn. Can I have a piece of uh, canvas from back behind you there? I should probably get that. Whatever you're talking about. What are you talking about? A groover? Yeah. <clears throat> you're actually cutting the groove in it like a stitching groover. But we we have some that are bigger. What if I just there's a V gouge, there's a U, and you can adjust the depth. Where's your old swivel blade, Denny? Gum track strips the wax off really easy. Does as long as the tape's on there? Yeah, which I mean, you're burnishing on tape. That's gonna be <laughs> Keeps going through my head, white on the right, white on the right. <laughs> well, as long as you alternate it, it shouldn't matter. Once you've started well, my anyways, opinion, yeah. too. But still, if you want to be. I guess just whenever you lay the Regul board. Regulations. When you, when you lay the board out for somebody to play. I still play the same boat both ways. But. I tell you what, that knife glides right through that. Yeah, it's that stuff cuts really neat. Oh, that wax that's on there just helps it. Yeah. Well, it, well it's tanned with it. lots of yeah. waxes and oils and stuff in it, and that just makes everything, you know, it greases everything that you do. It cuts like butter. Yeah. So here's what it is rubbing, rubbing that off like that. There's where the tape kind of pulled. Do you think I need to clean it all the way off? I don't know. I don't know. With a gum track and make it just fully black? Is it under the camera? Can you tell the difference on there? Yeah. Where's the sample piece? I have no idea. There's a piece. No, that's not it. I mean, I got a small cut somewhere. All right, you guys go back to your, your project. Don't let me slow you down. We'll be here. What did you do with it? I don't know. It's a great
great question. Is it in that trash can over there? Is there a small piece in that trash can? Me neither. This piece? Yeah, that'll work. Take it all the way down. Black. Sure. Yeah, take it all the way down if you can. It would be more of a contrast. Okay. This contrast is what we're after, right? Thanks for your suggestions. Thanks for your suggestions. I'll do what I want. Yeah. No. I'll do what you say. I got an idea for Striker. 1463 South Glenstone, and you can do whatever you would like. <laughs> I'll let you take this project over. Uh, is any using a two sided beveler? No. Nope. Nope. Just, just a regular beveler. Just holding his mouth the best way that he can. Yeah, when I. Uh, after I get the background done on this, then I will use a, a back beveler on it. Instead of a two sided beveler. Anybody that wants to come in, I will let them take this front. And gum track leaves a weird. Weird what? I need one more piece of canvas. If I can have a piece of canvas with gum track on it, and a piece that doesn't. Oh, the old Marvin glove. Mm -hmm. I wonder how old Marvin's doing. Marvin, are you watching? Probably not. Quiet in here, maybe. There's too much concentration. <clears throat> I seemingly made a project that we all have to concentrate on. We can't talk about nothing. Some viewers they enjoy that part of the video, <laughs> especially when I'm the one that's talking. Yep. That's all right. You know the old saying, that's like watching paint dry. People are going to say that's like watching someone devil. Like making, watching somebody make a leather checker chessboard. <laughs>
tried it. I have tried it before. More than once. I keep thinking, I'm going to try that again. And every time I try it, I think that's why I don't like it. What is going on? Um, just a little bit of this and a little bit of that. It was a great idea when I got started. right about two ounce. Um, right now I'm debating on if I'm going to leave it like this or have a lot of sewing and sew down each line of those. I know what my answer would be. <laughs> not, sure, not sure yet. The debate wouldn't last very long. Yep. Gum track is it gets underneath the tape. Yeah. So it does. It does. So you don't have a nice sharp. Uh, there was just a place, but it looks like it might have dried back up. So it might be all right. What's that? It's a smaller ruler, but I think it's better. That's what we'll do then. Since there was only one vote. Yeah. <laughs> it's like winning the lottery when you're the only one that bought a ticket. Yep. <laughs> Woohoo. Tony even do? Great question. You know what's hard to do? Just about everything. Swivel a black piece of leather on a straight line with a black blade. Yeah. <laughs> you know what it looks like I have? Piece of leather? Looks like I got a piece of leather that has squares on it. 
You guys need to get rid of these rolls of tape. What's wrong with them? Well, it either sticks or it doesn't stick, and then the, the dang backing won't come off of them either. Oh. Okay. I think they're old. Because they're getting gummy too. Did you hear that, Denny? Old and gummy? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Andy don't care for our tape. Like the guy in for a nice little video, and this is how we treat you. Yep. Lights coming from this direction. Dang old shadow, I can't see my lights. Oh. Precision guesswork. That's in the in the t-shirt, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. Dean said he would use a push belt one, but Dean doesn't let people borrow his tool. What are you doing with this piece, Andy? I was going to give it to you. Sweet. I think I'm going to cut a square in the middle of it. See how that works out. I bet you have a square. Uh, by all accounts, I'm going to make a two by two. Well, this is uh, two inches wide. Oh, fantastic. There you go. Did you bevel a square already, Denny? Yep, uh, all my squares are beveled. Oh, so now you're backgrounding. Now I'm backgrounding, yes. Uh, Mike said chessboard sounds like fun. What do you guys think? Oh, it sounds like a great idea. <laughs> Sounds like a great idea.
but don't give up till you're done. All right. Then give up. Then move on to another project. That's a project when you go, hey, uh, I mean, that was enjoyable. <laughs> Let's do something else. But I'm never going to do that again. in here with you, did you? No, I did not. Other than me. But, oh. That's something else that ought to be standard equipment in here. I mean, I'm always at the computer. Dead beat, I said oh. dead weight. That ain't no better. got to go to court. I got a notice the other day. That jury game. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like fun. The day after my birthday. The only time I've ever been called for jury duty was when I was in Craig, Colorado. They called me, and it was for night court. The TV show? Yeah, it seemed like it. I had to show up at like 10 o'clock in the evening. I showed up and waited around because you weren't supposed to go in. You're supposed to wait in your vehicle until they called you. Mm -hmm. About 11 o'clock, they came out and I said, we don't need you. So I said, okay, thank you. That's all there was to it. That's the story's over, you guys. That was it. That was the story. That was the story. I don't know what I'm doing. He didn't say he was going to count weeks. <laughs> I think he misread your, uh, your comment. Here. Well, it's still a good subject. Yeah. Well, we've got it. Story out of it. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of day you for? Oh, count. April 17th, 2022. Not sure what that is all about. Oh, he, he was posting a, uh, he was talking to, he seems unfamiliar about a report he did when he was in college. Oh. play chess, Denny? I've never been able to figure the game out. I've never tried very hard. I think even if I tried to think hard, I probably couldn't figure it out. 
Andy, it's pretty easy. If you're yeah. playing against family members for fun. <laughs> if there's no money involved. You don't care about winning. I don't know. I think checkers is more frustrating. What? What's frustrating about checkers? Because it, it's a lot simpler game, so, well, in the lot fewer things to learn to play checkers. So, your brain thinks less, so you think you're doing better, but, you know, in all aspects, you're not doing better. I think you just call it simple things. <laughs> Gives you a false sense of security. False sense of Actually, having knowledge, <laughs> and your brain is not as big as you might have thought that it was. Well, I'll be back. I need one more piece of leather. Andy's the only one that's going to get down today. Maybe. Rose could knock you out of here fast enough. I was going to say, Rose was ready to go. Is this is kind of silly. How's that going over there? I'm still at it. Chinese chess? Yes. A little ball game? Yeah. Like Chinese checkers. Right? Oh, Chinese checkers? It it's the same. I'm not sure. I always call it Chinese checkers. We started playing it. Then we decided it was more fun to throw marbles. That's how it went for me. This is a P as in Paul A zero zero five. P A zero zero five. What was that? It looks like bubble wrap. That's what it looks like to me. That's what I would call it. Sure, someone knows the proper name for it. But it's not me. Mike, you don't have it can be a checkers board instead of a chess board. I think Abigail, whenever she made it, she just wanted to send us to sound sophisticated.
lost the dog. Disappeared. Uh oh. But she went and hid, so she didn't have to come back in. I don't know, I kind of like this. Uh, do you want? Yeah, we got it on a 36 and a 12. It's actually uh, lasered on letters. What is that? It's a safety. Uh, oh, that's nice. Those red ones are a little, a little big, in my opinion. Yeah, they're a little unhandy. Especially on tables like this where they're not flat. Mm -hmm. You can't bend them. Yeah. The blades don't reach. A new product that'll be out soon. Getting the tickets for. You'll find somebody. Sounds like she was over in the new media, or whatever you want to call it now. Creative. Creative Arts Department. Creative Commons. Hello, Rose. Fastest way out of here. Just like I heard the word food. What do you think about that board? Um, what adhesive are you using? Uh, this is Aqualum. Aqualum 315. Water based adhesive. That spreads spreads the easiest. And doesn't uh, make you go crop side. Yeah, the smell factor of this one is very low. Sander. Cleaning cleaning a glue eraser. Yeah, I guess it's standard work. Yeah. The, the glue eraser is made for cleaning a sanding wheel. I mean, there's deluxe for that, but it'll also clean itself on the sanding. Clean your glue off of it while you clean your sanding. Yep. Yeah, I may have cut a little bit much. Here today and done is hammer around. That's <laughs> put the hammer down. Put the old hammer down. <laughs> Did 
this was your idea to remember that. Yeah. Well, we haven't really fully said it's my idea yet. I don't know what the video title said. Depends on how well it turns out. Yeah, you really messed it up if you back around the wrong one. I know. <clears throat> Is that why you're concentrating so much? One reason. The other reason is because I have trouble thinking about two things at once. You have the big one of those? Hmm? Did you get the big one? Yeah. I got a really nifty one from Etsy. And it, uh, it's it got random uh, like diamond shape oh, yeah. things on it. And you can just twist it any which way and it looks mm -hmm. pretty cool. Shannon says what? Uh, this is the first video I've been able to watch. There's a lot of focusing going on for this one. And we only have one loud mouth, not two. Sorry, Shannon, to be so quiet. Yeah, I've said everything I can say without acting completely ignorant. So oh. I stop. It's better to be thought a fool than to open your mouth and remove all doubt. Just remember that. Hmm. Um, is that where I've been going wrong? Maybe. <laughs> Rose? What? <laughs> Shush. Is that guy making a lot of noise and I don't like it? Come here. Come here. takes the gloss off of it. Does it really? Mm -hmm. I can't say that I would recommend it. it. Takes it off. I mean, it takes the wax off really nice. But the wax and the finish. <laughs> Yeah, look at it on that angle. You can kind of see that yeah. it's not as glossy. Yeah. Like through here. And if you buffed it, it'd probably knock some of the wax off on the parts you don't want it to knock off. Yeah.
what a what a day to come back to. I know. Make me work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think where are we at? Oh shoot, we're already 20 minutes over. Yeah. 20 minutes over. In fact, I've done my last lick there for today. Let me do this square and one more. And then I'll be done with mine. Well, I've done with what I'm going to do today. Hopefully, when this is antique, these squares will contrast a little more. I bet you they will. You about got her length though. So what are you gonna yeah, do? I haven't back beveled any yet. Oh, what are you gonna do for between videos? On this, you mean? Yeah. I think nothing. Just pick it up next on yeah, Friday. Because, uh, well, I might finish this background part. Okay. But then I'll probably back bevel on Friday and put on the lining. Okay. And, and stitch it and the lining in the, the string wrap. And it sounds like it's pretty close. Well, at least to go I'm around. I'm not necessarily it. happy with it, but it's in my finished product. Well, we can trade products and or change projects, and you can pick this one up. If you're not happy with that one, I'll let you take this one over. No? Hmm. I'm alright. Okay. Just thought I'd offer that to you. I'm a giver. That looks pretty nice. Pretty darn nice. There's a few I things really, that would have I done really like that. <clears throat> I really like that. Well, then what are you going to do with that edge? I'm going to cut it. Just just trim it off yeah. nice? All right. Well, we'll come back on Friday and finish up. Maybe Denny and I will finish this up and then play a game of chess. Let's play checkers. Oh, okay. All right. I agree. Because chess could be a complete disaster. <laughs> yeah, people will start saying, you're not playing by the right rules. <laughs> no. We'll be like, we don't care. <laughs> we don't care. <laughs> That little horse looking deal, that's gone. Yeah, just knock that <laughs> off the table. What was that? What? Um, Somebody what? just dropped it, it was metal. No, I think it was a great skill. Yeah. All right, well, we'll come back on Friday and do that. We'll see what happens to live shopping tomorrow. Crazy days are starting soon. You guys Thanks. have a good rest of the day. Thanks for having me. See you guys. Good to be back. I think. Hey, bye, Andy. Bye, Andy. <laughs> <laughs>